so this week in lab, you will be learning how to use an instrument called the gas chromatograph, or a GC for short. And the instrument is located right here. And I'm going to show you uh, the procedure for injecting your sample into the gas chromatograph. Uh, this week, you're going to be uh, simply learning how to use an instrument by separating three different alcohols. I have that here, and you want to make sure that you keep it corked after you prepare it. Okay? So this solution contains two milliliters of ether, three drops of one pentanol, three drops of one butanol, and three drops of two butanol. Okay? So we're going to use this and uh, learn how to use the instrument. I'm going to show you how to um, determine the volume of uh, solvent that you need to add to the GC. We're going to be using a, a pretty accurate uh, syringe, and I have two examples here. One is a 10 microliter syringe, which has uh, markings every one microliter. So you can measure it down to the nearest 0.1 microliter. Due to the, due to the uh, requirement for a close-up, I'm going to be doing, uh, showing you the technique using a 500 microliter uh, syringe. Okay, so the syringe has a, a metal, uh, a, a glass um, outer coating, and a metal plunger, which you can see here, and then a metal tipped syringe. So if we want to measure out some volume, say 50 microliters, the general procedure that we're going to follow for the GC is that we're going to uh, pull out the plunger just a little bit to give us an air bubble between the plunger and the opening of the of the needle and then we're going to take our solution here and pipette up a certain volume doesn't have to be 50 microliters just a certain volume now that we have a, 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 the metal plunger an air bubble and our solvent we're going to then pull up another air bubble so you're going to see what you should see in the video, and you'll see a close-up of this later, is you're going to see the opening of the syringe, an air bubble, your solvent, which in this uh, video is red, and another air bubble, and then your metal plunger. To read the, um, to, to get the volume of solvent that you need, you're actually going to depress, push down the plunger to around 50 microliters okay and what that's going to do is that's going to expel some liquid and you can read the 50 microliters off your syringe you're now going to take a chem wipe and you're going to wipe the blade of the syringe the needle of the syringe and now you can pull out the plunger again and what you should read here is approximately 50 microliters and you'll now see a close-up of this syringe, which will show you uh, what you should be looking for. inject your sample into the GC, and the proper procedure for this is not to hold onto the plunger. Okay, you want to hold onto the needle, and you're going to put this into the hole of this silver knob at the top. We're going to inject this in there, and initially you're going to feel a lot of tension because there's a septum there that the needle has to go through. So you, this is going to be one smooth motion. We're going to push this in push the plunger in and pull it out. Your partner will then push collect on the uh, computer. The 
So while your uh, alcohols are separating, while your chromatogram is running, you should take this time to record the data that you need for this lab. Okay? There are several pieces of data that you're going to need to record so that if you ever needed to repeat this experiment, you could repeat it uh, so that it's reproducible. The GC number is listed on top of the instrument as well as the type of column that we're using. So you need to record both of those pieces of information. The <clears throat> column temperature is located right here. And if the column button is depressed, we'll be reading that uh, actual value. To switch uh, from the column to the detector temperature, we simply have to push in that button. And as you can see, this is reading around 220 degrees Celsius. To read the injector temperature, we push the next button, which is the injector, and this is reading around 162 degrees Celsius. Okay? Uh, the other things you'll need to record are your helium chloride here in uh, PSI, pounds per square inch. And it would also be nice if you recorded the range of your graph as well as the attenuator factor okay, of your graph. These two knobs tell you how, how big the peaks were in your spectrum. Uh, so when you're running the, the gas chromatogram, you're, you're, you're using the instrument, there are three sources of confusion or three sources of potential errors that you may run into. The most common is that when you have your uh, uh, solution in your syringe and you're getting ready to inject it, and you inject it, let's, let's go through the motion, right? So if I was to get to the septum, I push this in, and students get a little excited, so they push the plunger in really fast. And what happens is the plunger uh, bends. This is a very thin piece of metal, right? There's no need, there's no need to rush for this. You simply need to do a controlled motion here, push it in, and then pull the whole needle out, the whole syringe out. Okay, the second source of confusion is if you're, if you're injecting and you forget to wipe off the outside of the syringe, then what will happen is you will have solution on uh, your syringe uh, needle, as well as the, the solution in your syringe. So what will happen is you'll get this thing called uh, peak doubling. You'll get two sets of peaks in your spectrum. And you'll see a picture of this uh, later on in the video. Okay. The third source of confusion is uh, a lot of people uh, have to work. This, this is not a very uh, straightforward procedure. When you inject your sample through the syringe or through the septum, you push it in, you push the plunger in, and a lot of people will tend to leave this there. Okay? You don't want to leave this in the instrument. You want to pull this out as soon as you push the plunger in. Okay? So one smooth motion will give you the best chromatogram. So before you start using the GC syringe, and after you've used the GC syringe, you want to clean it with the solvent that you've run your sample. To do this, you simply place the syringe into the solvent and pipe it up and down maybe six or seven times to uh, clean any debris and to uh, get the solvent into your syringe.